Hey folks, it's Larson Halleck again, and it's time for another edition of Pick Up Assholes. And today, we're going after another founding father of the movement, most likely the first PUA to strike it rich, and perhaps not coincidentally, the first PUA to utterly crash and burn and destroy everything he created, the one and only Tucker Max. Tucker Tuckington Max is best known as the former law student and scion of the owner of a chain of restaurants in Florida that kick-started the entire quote-unquote frat-tire genre with his early 2000s website, TuckerMax.com, and his 2006 compilation book, I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell. His breakaway success likely comes from two things. One, the sheer uniqueness of his prose at the time, and two, the fact that he did it entirely from the ground up, another rarity. Rather than seeking approval and meddling from big publishers, he forged his own path, making his own media company and making himself an institution single-handedly. But more than that, Mr. Max wrote and achieved success by being unabashedly, albeit immaturely, masculine in an age that denigrates masculinity at all costs. Thus, Tucker Max was like a lightning bolt to the forehead of young men across America in the early 2000s. And then, in the span of a few short years, the invincible Tucker Max crashed and burned hard. His finances in dire straits, he turned his back on his fans and embraced the enemy, thus becoming a whipping boy across the masculine corners of the internet. What happened, you might ask? We're gonna go over that. And what better place to start than his first and best work, his opus primum at the magnum opus. I hope they serve beer in hell. Now to clarify, I didn't really read this when Tucker Max was at his peak. Like I said in the last PUA holes, my drug of choice in the early pickup years was a mystery. By the time I got to college, uh, 2009 if you must know, Tucker Max was on his way out. So this was, in fact, the first time I ever read Tucker's book. But the old gray lady liked it. What the book is, is essentially a collection of short stories from Tucker's life, allegedly, about his sexual escapades, or sexcapades, if you will. I am a proud and complex man, and I face most of my problems alone. Every single one of those statements is a profound falsehood, but uh, we'll get to that. Like all of the other early PUA guys, Tucker gives us a list of his co-conspirators, all of whom are mercifully forgotten. Dickless Bedwetter, The Turd, Skip On, Sling Blade, Bill Stinkwater, <laughs> That's dour. Oh, Vander Huge, Thick McRunfast, Rip steak face. Crunch butt steak. Big McLarge huge. Yeah, I've never heard of any of those people, but yeah, what do I know about the Manosphere, am I right? None of the stories in this book are really connected to each other at all, so rather than go through all of them, let's just go over a few of them, and we'll see how much of a sexual wizard Mr. Max actually is. In this story, Tucker goes to a restaurant and orders a vodka and club. I would criticize him for not drinking it straight, but then he starts using a portable breathalyzer as a conversation piece, so that takes my mind off things. He goes after a woman who is explicitly stated to have big fake bazooms. Tucker explicitly says in a later chapter that he likes fake breasts. Having big fake tits is a pro in his eyes which is a major reason for why I doubt his sexual prowess. As a man who has actually felt both fake and real breasts, I would imagine 99% of men would agree with me in that the real thing is better. We also get an example of something eerily prophetic, as Tucker says that he feels small if the spotlight is not on him. His life will illustrate that, but more on that later. He also mocks some people in the bar he's in for believing in energy healing. As somebody who has dedicated much time to exposing martial arts fraud, I can't agree with that sentiment, but this statement will, again, be profoundly ironic in just a few years, but again, more on that later. While at this bar, Tucker decides to see if he can get his blood alcohol level to 0.2, 20% BAC. Well, I suppose all that drinking would explain the dad bod Tucker has. Anyway, long story short, he gets drunk, he takes off his pants because the bar required pantslessness for some stupid reason, he eats sushi, and then he barfs. Personally, I don't see what the appeal of all this is. As somebody who was a bit of a partier myself in college, I've gotten drunk and puked and hung over too. Whoopty fucking shit. Some nights, you become a legend. Ha ha ha, citation needed. So they go to a country bar, and they start antagonizing the rednecks like a bunch of assholes. A mechanical bull is ridden. 
Tucker seems to think that professional wrestlers use fake blood. Word of advice, Slick, they don't. One of his asshole friends named Hate keeps trying to run into the ring. And for the first time in my life, I actually sympathize with fat, untalented, hardcore wrestlers in that I just want them to smack the shit out of this guy. So to make another long story short, they totally beat up like 30 rednecks until one of them pulls out a gun and then they go to a sorority party and force their way in with the sheer force of masculinity. Yeah, I'm sure this happened. You can clearly look at Tucker Max and see he's a rough customer who hangs out with a tough crowd. Yes, it is actually written like that. The blow and job follies. Tucker apparently thinks the word blowjob has an ampersand. Tucker does agree with me in that blowjobs can be done wrong a lot more often than they are done right. The fact that he's lucid enough to know that tells me that he has at least had sex once before writing this book, so he's not a complete fraud. The first story involves him not warning the girl to move her head and he blasts a load in her mouth. She then spits in his face out of spite. I was patient with her because she was beautiful and I was still young enough to think I was capable of love. Oh, you're such a dark and mysterious sociopath, Tucker. The next story involves him blasting a load into a girl's mouth. She chokes on it. And then he gives her the Heimlich maneuver in a totally incorrect manner and he breaks her ribs. Now that I can believe since Tucker Max is portrayed as an incompetent jackass. But then with another girl, he leaves a skid mark on her couch as she blows him, and then he fucks her man, at least three or four times before she sleeps, and then he flips the couch cushion over. I'm gonna call BS on this one. Not, not the fact that Tucker didn't wipe properly and left skid marks on her couch, that I can believe. But it's the fact that he comes in her mouth and then fucks her, and I quote, three or four more times. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm more of a physical specimen than Tucker Max will ever be. And the most I fucked in a day was three times. And those were spaced out throughout the day. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I don't believe that a man could orgasm five times in the span of like three hours. We've all fucked a couple of fatties. Indeed, most masculine writers will admit to, if not screwing a fat girl, then at least fucking a girl who's a little, uh, busted. And I include myself in the latter. Ahem, anyway... This is about when he first makes his website, and he gets propositioned by girls. It's not unusual now, since I get propositioned dozens of times a day. If that was ever true, it's quite evidently not now. A fat chick emails him, and he tells his friends who act like 1980s movie bullies rather than any sort of real human being. Long story short, they bang, and then Tucker throws her clothes out the window so that nobody sees her with him. You know you could have just not slept with her, right, Tucker? Oh, but he made a bet with his friends that he'd sleep with the first girl that contacted him from his website. And I'm sure it was just his sense of masculine honor that made him keep his word. Yes. Despite that bit of dishonorable behavior, there are a few bits I like, such as this one where he says that Crystal is overrated bilge water. I agree. He asks the girl who recommended Crystal, What is your favorite television show? She says, TRL. Let me do the ordering. God help me, I laughed at that. They go to the hotel, and they have sex in the hot tub, and a man watches and masturbates to them. Okay, first things first, Kim's game, Tucker, use it. Secondly, Tucker tries to empathize, saying, we've all been there. I've never actually jerked off to two people fucking in real life. I mean, I watch porn all the time. The man who claims to have written the book on pickup lines admits to watching porn all the time. What else do I need to say, really? And then there's the famous story, Tucker tries anal, hilarity does not ensue. Uh, a note on this, he was trying anal for the first time as the pitcher, not the receiver. I know, looking at his current girlfriend makes it a little bit ambiguous. Not knowing how to do anal sex, he, and this is a direct quote, CONSULTS HOMOSEXUALS. Yeah, for a self-proclaimed stud, he seems to spend a lot of time in gay bars. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Apparently, he did not understand the advice because he sticks the tube of Astroglide into her ass and then just empties it out. They fuck, she ends up shitting on his penis, which causes him to puke on her in response. And then this friend fell out of the closet, uh, the friend was filming the encounter, then he threw up, and it was just a big barfarama. I would say I appreciate the honesty here, if it wasn't painfully obvious, this never happened. Uh, well, it was filmed on VHS, we didn't, you know, we didn't know you could save the film via the negatives. After that, he goes on to describe how he totally dated a pattern of super hot and insecure girls. 
I presume he did that right after he summoned the succubus and then banged the unicorn. And, as Tucker mentions that he may have slept with a transsexual, <clears throat> other than the one he's currently dating, the book staggers to its close. Is it possible to be a terrible person without breaking the law? I hope they serve beer in hell, even if it is rodeo cool. In other words, he's admitting that he's a scoundrel and proud of it. Certainly something worthy of respect, although perhaps not admiration. So that's Tucker Max at his peak. The book was, if nothing else, very unique for its day, and thus it was a big success, and this led Tucker to diversify his business portfolio. He started his media company, Rudius Media, took public speaking engagements, and even optioned the movie rights for I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell. Let's take a look at one of those public speaking engagements, an interview on the Opie and Anthony radio show. Seeing her throwing up and it's making me throw up. I'm throwing up more. All of a sudden, true fucking story, my fucking buddy falls out of the closet. And he's like, oh my god, because he saw us and sm you know, smelled it. I mean, you can imagine this. Yeah, I gotta call this guy out. There's no way I believe that story about the chick and the Astroglide. And uh, I'm in the pal talk room right now, and pretty much no one else believes him either. Well, I was a little suspicious when he was telling the story because I'm wondering, you have to have the tape. No, dude, it was like, you remember the VH, the, the big cameras yeah. where you put the VHS yeah, tape yeah, yeah. in? He fell out and like it, you know, like the little tape itself broke. Of course, like the magnet, you know, it's magnetized. So we could have easily gone and changed it, but it's like, I didn't think, you know, it's like remember you said you don't write down your stories at 20. I didn't write this stuff down at 21. I started writing it down at 27. You know, uh, a sentence. Was or there two. ever a police I mean, report? Um, no, dude. I looked and looked and looked, and uh, I never found one. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> Listen, I, like, uh, that's what I always tell people. I'm like, if you, uh, plenty of people have stories that are just as funny or just as cool as mine. No they just don't write them down. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, well, I mean, like, if you think about it, uh, it was just a crashed out window. <laughs> in a, yeah, just a crashed out window. window. Yeah, things in life. Uh, Robin, uh, Marilyn. Come in your hey, face. what's up? Hey, Tucker, I just checked out your website and listened to you guys online. You're a clown, dude. I mean, there's no way these are real, for one. But also, it just sounds like you're just trying to make things up. You know, everyone has friends that go through and, you know, one-up you and make mm. things up when they're blatantly lying. And that's what it sounds like you're doing. Uh, yeah, man, I'll call him out. You can tell the nervousness in his voice. Look at how many times he said like. All right. Thank you, Tucker Mac. Tucker, thanks, no man. Problem. Thanks, man. I hope they serve Beer in Hell is the, is the New York Times I bestseller. Man, how do you get on the bestseller list? And here's where the brakes start to fall off. The film of I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell was a massive flop. Now, I don't know how. It was made by the same people that made Donnie Darko. And I mean, with scenes like this. Look over the deaf girl. What, you're deaf now too? Yeah, Dan. I had sex with a deaf girl. Didn't you hook up with a mute girl last semester? I mean, that makes you two-thirds away to a Helen Keller. Oh, this cartoon is disturbingly hot. Can you imagine a threesome of these two? Do you really think it's possible to keep me from something I want? The more important question is, are you ready to get shit-faced and grab some titties? Yeah, I just have no idea how this autobiographical movie that's exactly like literally every comedy that came out between 1999 and 2005 failed. But fail it did making $300,000 on its opening weekend and $1.5 million total. Rudius Media was on the brink. What could save it? Perhaps Tucker Max returning to his literary wheelhouse. His two follow-up books, Assholes Finish First and Hilarity Ensues, were critical and commercial flops, being that they were basically the same thing as his first book, except now he was 10 years older, and thus it was really pathetic that this 40-year-old man was running around still talking about banging those sluts, man, and still hanging out with his dickhead friends. I got the audiobook of these, I listened to about 10 minutes of each, and then I gave up, so I'm not going to talk much about these. So now that all of his post I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell ventures failed, Tucker did the one thing he could do, honorably dust himself off and try again. Nah, just kidding, he totally sold out. He threw a hissy fit and shut down his website's message board. And he did a pathetic Forbes interview in which he claimed that he behaved like a cad because his parents were mean to him. Now he was in therapy to change his ways. His last Hail Mary was teaming up with Jeffrey Miller to make a lame little website called The Mating Grounds, in which he stole content from other, much better websites while defaming those websites in public. If that weren't enough, he uses that website to hawk BS testosterone and dietary supplementation, which is interesting for a guy who once mocked energy healers, 
I guess that change happened around when Tucker fried his balls with an x-ray machine. Taking a quick glance at the mating grounds shows that it hasn't been updated in more than a year, so... Yeah, Tucker Max is done. So that was the formerly great Tucker Max. Fuck Tucker, Tucker sucks. Even though my personal vitriol towards him is less than the one I have for mystery, objectively speaking, Tucker is simultaneously one of the greatest and worst figures in our corner of the internet. And although I only read him recently, I do feel that I have some understanding of why so many were furious at his betrayal. And looking back in hindsight, he deserves every bit of mockery he gets. I'm Larson Halleck. Keep on training. People are very uncomfortable, including everybody in this room. <laughs> well, it just fell, I mean. Not me. <laughs> it fell in what? I don't need no fucking tape. Absolutely. Your behind his stories are hysterical. Yeah, it fell fucking fell. shit. If he's sitting on the bowl, the fucking logs coming out, as some girl sucking on his cock, I don't need no tape, I don't need no Fuck nothing. Yeah. That's funny shit. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, All right. Thank you, Tucker Max. Tucker, thanks, no man. Problem. Thanks, man. I hope they serve beer in hell as the, as the New York Times. Best seller. How do you get on the best seller list? Thank you, sir. Tucker. Thanks, Yo. thanks. All right. No, dude, dude, dude. Oh, wow. What happened? He fell out onto the tape. <laughs> I didn't hear what happened to the tape. He's what happened? Because like yeah, that would be something he, he said would want. Said something about it. It was you know it was the old days where it was the big yeah the clunky VHS. Yeah, the VHS. Oh. I fell out on the and, and, and it broke the tape. Yeah, then the Monty Python stole it and they sketched it. It really did. They. <laughs>